by his own articles, Pavlovitz, doesn't believe in a holy God. If an evolutionist Christian doesn't have you questioning whether they are Christian or not, a Christian who doesn't subscribe to the holiness of God will. John Pavlovitz not only believes in evolution, but Pavlovitz does not believe in the holiness of God. John Pavlovitz's image of God is so unholy that Pavlovitz doesn't believe in the concept of hell. Although, if there was a hell, Pavlovitz would believe that biblical Christians would make up the vast majority of persons in hell. Pavlovitz often has fantasies of imagining Christians in a place like hell. To say that Pavlovitz comments are odd behavior for someone who professes to be Christian is an understatement. While I can't speak for every Christian, I have yet to run across a true believing Christian who catches themselves daydreaming of people roasting in hell. True believers in Christ weep over the lost souls that will be in a forever torment of a place like hell. Why? Because true believing Christians understand one clear thing which is, you will be separated from the one who is the source of all things that are good. Every single good thing in life will be taken away from those who hate God. People often joke about how they are going to have a party in hell. Even Pavlovitz seems to make unwise and foolish remarks about partying in hell. Let me make this crystal clear. There will be no partying in hell. And here's why. Anything that was good found in you will be stripped away. It will be revealed that it was never you, that all good qualities come from God. James 1.17 dates the following. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. Pavlovitz doesn't see what the Bible describes, and what the Bible describes is a God who is holy. A God that is absolutely going to throw people in hell. Whether Pavlovitz likes this idea or not, it's going to happen. Pavlovitz's description of God is a God that aligns up more with Greek mythology, or a goddess of love gene, than the God of the Bible. In Isaiah 6 3 the prophet describes God as such. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. Pavlovitz's image of God is so full of unholiness that John's God just wants to do the ostrich. You know, the head plastered into the ground dance. I swear, sir, I haven't done anything. I always do nothing. I see nothing, I hear nothing, and above all, I know nothing. Pavlovitz believes that God is so loving that this somehow disqualifies God from taking retribution on ungodly or unholy persons. In other words, fallen people have more standards of justice than God. If Pavlovitz's theology was true, then Pavlovitz would be more righteous than God, as Pavlovitz displays more examples of what righteous anger looks like. Sure, Pavlovitz's displays of righteous anger are often twisted but nonetheless, he still displays what righteous anger looks like. Just go on his website. It's filled with nothing but Pavlovitz venting, his anger towards what he would consider unholy conduct by self-professing Christians. Let me make one thing clear. Neither Pavlovitz, or for that, myself are holy. Isaiah 6 5 should be the standard, of every single Christian who claims to be a believer of Christ. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Pavlovitz will allow himself to be angry with the world's injustice. But likewise Pavlovitz won't let the God of the Bible be angry with the injustice of the world. And yet, Pavlovitz would claim that he is angry because he is a person of love. In the same manner, God by his nature has to punish those who are unholy. God's character demands punishment for unclean lips. Just like John demands justice for people who he thinks who have been wronged. God also demands justice. Justice, not for sinning against people, but for sinning against a holy and righteous God. The concept of justice is an attribute from a holy and just God. Since we creatures of God are made in his image, we will demand justice for injustice acts that are committed. Humans are unique in this manner. As I don't have to remind you, 
that there are not too many turtle courts floating around. That's because, a turtle is not made in the image of God. But humans are. We demand justice, because our God demands justice. We demand punishment, for those who commit heinous crimes. We demand these things, because we deep down inside know that there is a standard that requires punishment for violating a holy standard. And that holy standard, is found in each and every single one of us. The Law of God. Romans 2.14 states the following. Indeed, when Gentiles, who do not have the law, do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves. Even though they do not have the law, they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. Next time on a rebuke of John Pavlovitz, Pavlovitz believes that God is pro-choice. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video and are not too shy, we would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that plus button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, and it's not too much to ask, if you could go ahead and click that like button. If you could also subscribe to both our Rumble and YouTube channels, this also would be most helpful. If you found us on our website, you can also sign up for our newsletter. You can also follow us on Gab and Getter. We again thank you for checking us out, and ask that you check in every so often, as we have many videos that are in the production phase. Until next time God bless.